Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm Sunday Edition, where we talk about issues facing small farmers. Today's video is about how to load cattle without a lot of chutes and equipment and alleys and all that stuff. But first, I want to clear the air about something. In the two years since I started this channel, I've had a lot of comments that I look like, first of all, Jay Leno. I don't look like Jay Leno. His chin is huge. My chin's not that big. Secondly, John Lithgow. <laughs> is my hair really that way? I don't think so. And thirdly, and this is the funniest one, Mr. Incredible. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe in the midsection I do, but otherwise, no. This is the guy I envision myself resembling most. Got it, right? Don't you see it? Exactly. Hillary didn't agree, and you probably don't either, but that's what I'm going with. These two gentlemen are going to the butcher today, and as with anything on the farm, the first thing to load in cattle is a lot of prior planning. You don't just go down the pasture, round them up, and load them onto the trailer. That's a really stressful event for you and the cattle. So about four days ago, and I showed this in a previous video, we brought these guys into this little pen. Now there's something about cattle that I've noticed, and I don't know if it holds true for everybody, but for our herd it certainly does. Cattle will always want to go from a large space to a small space. And when you combine that with their natural curiosity, it's easy to get them into a small pen like this. So this pen door remains closed all the time under normal circumstances. The day we opened it, the first thing the cattle did when they got to this area is they went in to investigate this new area. So that makes it easy to catch them. That's different from pigs, who when you open a new area to pigs, they're real hesitant to investigate it. A good parallel for in cattle behavior is when you open cattle to a new pasture. If you open them to a large pasture, the first thing they do is they'll go around the fence line and investigate the whole thing. Same thing happens when you open a new pen to them. We don't have any chutes or alleys or anything like that on the farm. All we have is this small pen in our upper barn. We have a matching small pen in our winter barn that we use to load cattle in the winter. And you don't need all that expensive equipment if you're just loading a few head at a time like we are. And remember, we brought them in here four days before they were to go to the butcher because I wanted them to go through the, the initial stress of getting put in this little pen and being separated from the herd and to kind of get over that before loading day so that when we pull the trailer up, they're not stressed by their current conditions at all. And the second thing I did to kind of hedge my bets because it's always good to have a backup plan and even a plan C on loading day is I started feeding them first crack corn and then sweet feed. Now, our herd is 100% or maybe you can say 99.999% grass fed. I've been feeding them a scoop of this twice a day for the last four days and now they're hooked on it. This is my extra candy that I can use to bring them in the trailer. So I'm going to go get the trailer and bring it in. And notice if I were loading pigs, I would have put the trailer up to the pen a week ago and gotten the pigs familiar with going into the trailer by feeding them out of it. With cattle, you don't want to do that. You want to open the trailer on loading day. That's your best chance of getting them in. So I got the trailer backed up to where I want it to be and see these gates overlap so we can open the gate and then slide the trailer in between the two of them so that we've essentially extended the pen and can open the trailer doors without any chance of the steers getting out. It certainly helps that we raise pretty tame cattle. If your cattle are really wild, of course, your experience will differ. We'll open up the trailer. And now for my secret weapon. Yeah, you like that, right? You guys like this stuff. Alright, gentlemen. You don't push them in unless you have to. These are not to whack the cattle with, these are to make yourself look bigger. You guys won't go in there with a sweet feed that way, will you? Thank you. 
doing? Like I said, steers are more difficult. So there they are in the trailer. These cattle weren't the easiest to load, but they weren't the most difficult we've had either. It's important when you go into your loading day to have a bunch of contingency plans. So the sweet feed was kind of plan A for me. It didn't work all that great, but we didn't lose our cool. If you lose your cool, if you show that you're nervous or if you show you're afraid from the cat of the cattle, they'll sense that. So after the sweet feed didn't work, we just kind of gradually worked them in and we didn't apply excessive force you know some pressure on their backside and eventually we got them in we have had animals that are harder than these guys to load single animals actually and then we have a plan c which is an electric cattle prod and we only bring that out when we have to we bring it out more often for pigs but we rarely need it for cattle some of you may look at this old trailer and say oh geez you need a new feather light trailer and you know with two compartments and all that well Part of being a small farmer is you really have to limit your overhead expenses. Beef is hard enough to make money on without spending lots of money on new trailers and squeeze chutes and chutes and gates and pens and all that stuff. So keeping it simple is really important and knowing your animals is I think even more important than if you're a big farmer because you got to know how they're going to act with that kind of minimal infrastructure that you're using to move them around. And finally to end this video I guess I need to say a few words about another question that I always get which is how how can you do this? How can you raise an animal and then send them off to the butcher? How can you play God? And it comes in lots of forms, tons of comments. I was raised on a farm and this is kind of the natural cycle of being a livestock farmer. If you have a problem with it, you probably, well, as I always say, shouldn't be a livestock farmer and probably shouldn't be eating meat. People need to come closer to the process instead of distancing themselves more and more from it. As Hillary told me when I said, well, what do you think about all this? You know, we give them the best life they can while they're here, but they're only here for a limited time. And this is a business. It's not an animal shelter. And I don't feel like I'm playing God by sending animals off at a certain time. Everything works according to a schedule. With the steers like we loaded today, on the day they're born, we know that in order, of birth that year the steers are going off to the butcher in two years or two years and six months in that time frame that's easy to figure out and with cows a cull cow goes if she's not performing if she's not calving correctly if she's not mothering correctly then she goes and heifers go if they're not of good enough breeding stock in our opinion to keep and grow into cows so there's no randomness to it everything is predetermined based on how we set up our herd I hope this video was informative. Have a great Father's Day if you're a father. It is Father's Day. It's Father's Day morning when I'm filming this. And I'll see you next time.